Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the City of Warrenville City Council regular meeting for May 15th, 2016. Uh, may I have a roll call, please? Alderman Ashauer? Here. Alderman Berry? Here. Alderman Bevere? Here. Here. Al <laughs> Alderman Goodman? Here. Alderman Hoffman? Here. Alderman Widener? Here. Alderman Wilson? Here. Alderman Davalos is excused. Thank you, Emily. Would you please stand as you are able and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, uh, many of you are here tonight about an issue, and some of you apparently know that it's a uh, protocol to sign up. If you haven't signed up and you want to speak on the issue, I'll still allow you to speak, so you don't have to worry about going over there. We have quite a few people who have signed up, but again, if you didn't sign up, you didn't realize you had to, and you wish to speak, we'll let you come to the podium and say your piece. But first, a few proclamations. Here. National Police Week. Chief, could you join me, please? I just have to get closer, I think. Proclamation National Police Week, May, 7, May 15th through the 21st, 2017. To recognize National Police Week 2017 and to honor the service and sacrifice of those law enforcement officers killed in the line of duty while protecting our communities and safeguarding our democracy. Whereas there are approximately 900,000 law enforcement officers serving in communities across the United States, including the dedicated members of the Warrenville Police Department, and whereas since the first recorded death in 1791, more than 2,000 or 20,700 law enforcement officers in the United States have made the ultimate sacrifice and been killed in the line of duty, and whereas the names of these dedicated public servants are engraved on the walls of the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial in Washington, D.C., and whereas the service and sacrifice of all officers killed in the line of duty were honored during the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund's 29th Annual Candlelight Vigil on the evening of May 13, 2017, and whereas the Candlelight Vigil is part of the National Police Week, which takes place this year on May 15th through the 21st, and whereas May 15th is designated as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of all fallen officers and their families and the United States flag should be flown at half staff. And therefore, be it resolved that the City of Warrenville formally designates May 15th through the 21st as Police Week in Warrenville and publicly salutes the service of law enforcement officers in our community and in communities across the nation. Thank you so much, Chief. Thank you. Very much. I want to thank you uh, very much, members of the community, the city council, and also the fine officers that I have the privilege of working with every day and who are out there 24 hours a day doing the difficult work that uh, sometimes we take for granted. Um, their dedication to the job is, is just so evident that it, that it is a passion with them. Uh, five of our officers volunteered on their own time and did go down uh, on May 15th for the police memorial service. Uh, in Springfield, Illinois, so the city of Warrenville was uh, well represented by them. So again, thank you, and we'll continue to do our best to bring you the best possible service that we can. Thanks again. I might add, in the last couple of years, there have been at least four um, agencies outside of Warrenville that I've heard about that have ranked uh, the safety of communities in the state consistently Warrenville ranks in the top 15% of the safest communities in the entire state. So our department does a remarkable job for us. So thank you, Chief. <laughs> is Bob Canero here? Bob, did I see Bob? There he is, come on out, Bob. This is the DuPage River Sweep Proclamation. 
all sorts of good things going on in our community. Welcome, Bob. Bob is on the Bicyclist and or Environmental Protection, <laughs> Environmental Advisory Commission. DuPage River Suite, May 20th, 2017. May 20th is gonna, a busy, busy day. Whereas the County of DuPage through the Department of Stormwater Management and municipalities, townships, park districts recognizes ongoing stream cleaning and restoration as essential for the preservation of waterways throughout DuPage County and Northeastern Illinois. Whereas DuPage County River Sweep is a countywide stream cleanup and restoration event organized by the Conservation Foundation and held in cooperation with the American Rivers National River Cleanup. And whereas the purpose of the River Sweep is to encourage citizens and volunteer groups to help sweep our rivers clean, hence the name, by picking up debris in and along our waterways and by participating in stream restoration projects. And whereas stream cleaning efforts have been very successful with more than 11,000 700 volunteers removing nearly 261 tons of debris from the DuPage County stream since 1991. Think about that for a minute. Somebody threw away 261 tons of garbage in our waterways. Whereas the City of Warrenville through its Environmental Advisory Commission promotes environmental awareness and behavior. Now therefore I, David O'Bromel, Mayor of the City of Warrenville, do hereby urge all citizens to make a difference in the quality of water in the area by participating in the DuPage River Sweep on Saturday, May 20th, 2017, and to meet at the Qantas Park and join the Warrenville Environmental Advisory Commission and other volunteers in cleaning Ferry Creek at 9 a.m. 9 a.m., May 20th, 2017, right across the street. Bob, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. I just want to repeat what the mayor just said about uh, anybody who wants to volunteer, wants to show up at Qantas Park this Saturday, 9 o'clock. You can stay for a half hour, hour, whatever you want. We'll provide everything, and we're just going to do a little bit of um, uh, cleanup. So we'll be there at 9 o'clock Saturday. Thanks, Thank Mayor. Phil Kukler. National Public Works Week. Um, this is a good one. May 21st through the 27th through uh, 2017. Whereas, public works infrastructure, facilities, and services are of vital importance to a viable and resilient community and to the health, safety, and welfare of the residents and businesses in the city of Warrenville. And whereas public works services are an integral part of our citizens' everyday lives, and whereas the support and understanding of an informed citizenry is vital to the efficient operation of public works systems and programs. And whereas public works facilities and services could not be provided without the dedicated efforts of the qualified and dedicated public works professionals, engineers, supervisors, and maintenance employees who plan, design, build, operate, and maintain the streets, sidewalks, bike paths, water supply and distribution, sanitary sewer systems, public buildings, vehicles, heavy equipment, parks, special events, and other structures and facilities central to serving our citizens. Did I miss anything, Phil? <laughs> and whereas it is in the public interest for the citizens of Warrenville to understand the importance of public works and public works programs, whereas May 21st through the 27th marks the National Public Works Week sponsored by the American Public Works Association. Now, therefore, I, David Obromo, Mayor, do hereby proclaim May 21st through the 27th, 2017 as National Public Works Week in the city of Warrenville. And I call upon all citizens, civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the difficulties involved in providing public works services and to recognize the contributions of public works employees make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Um, just like to thank my staff for the hard work they do every day and thank the mayor and city council for the support you provide us and the whole department um, throughout the year. Thank you. Remember when it's five below zero and you see those floodlights on out on the street and there's water running all over the place and it's 11 o'clock at night and there's some people out there in a ditch fixing that for you. That's what they do for us and they do it very well. So I'm very proud of our Public Works Department and our Water Department, they do a terrific job and they're always there for us. Dan Leonard, Dan's here, I saw him earlier. Veterans of Foreign Wars, Poppies coming up. Buddy Poppies, welcome Dan. 
<clears throat> May 19th through the 20th, 2017, is the Veteran of Foreign Wars Buddy Poppies. Whereas the annual sale of Buddy Poppies by the Veterans of Foreign Wars in the United States has been officially recognized and endorsed by governmental leaders since 1922, and whereas VFW Buddy Poppies are assembled by disabled veterans, and the proceeds of this worthy fundraising campaign are used exclusively for the benefit of disabled and needy veterans, and the widows and orphans of deceased veterans. And whereas the basic purpose of the annual sale of Buddy Poppies by the Veterans of Foreign Wars is eloquently reflected in the desire to honor the dead by helping the living. Now therefore, I, David L. Brummel, Mayor of the City of Warrenville, do hereby urge citizens of this community to recognize the merits of this cause by contributing generously to its support through the purchase of Buddy Poppies on the day set aside for the distribution of these symbols of appreciation for the sacrifices of our honored dead. I urge all patriotic citizens to wear a buddy poppy as mute evidence of our gratitude to the men and the women of this country who have risked their lives in defense of the freedoms which we continue to enjoy as American citizens and to donate to VFW Poppy Days on May 19th and the 20th, 2017. Dan, thank you for doing this again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, City Council and staff. <clears throat> On Friday, May 19th, Saturday, May 20th, poppies will be sold in Warrenville at some intersections and in front of some retail stores. The newly formed American Legion and the Warrenville VFW will join together this year to sell these poppies and raise money for the organizations like Wounded Warriors, the soldiers that have returned home with physical handicaps, and for military families who have lost family members who gave the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. Our military veterans will once again step forward and give their personal time to sell poppies, Please thank them as well, as well as supporting them in need. I have Buddy Poppy and commemorate Poppy Days. Thank you very much. Uh, you may or may not be aware, but it's been uh, 50 years since Warrenville incorporated as a community. Before that, we were just a little settlement here. Uh, we had no government to speak of and basically got no respect because we had no government. Um, a lot of people worked to make that change happen, the change being that we had uh, our own local control of our affairs. This was not an easy process. It uh, divided the community for many decades. It took a long time to happen. Um, some people uh, were central in that effort. Uh, they risked a lot. This was not something that was without um, consequences. If you had a business and you were on one side, sometimes you lost business to people who were on the other side. So it was a very divisive issue. Tonight we want to honor one special person who spearheaded this along with his partner and made it happen for us finally in 1967, 50 years ago. We have a celebration coming up on the 21st. I want to remind you of that uh, up at um, the Warren Tavern where the, the uh, tavern will be open and the um, Historical Society will be open and all kinds of fun stuff going on on the 21st. So keep that in mind. But for tonight, special recognition to the person who's most recognized as the one who made this happen for our town, Dwight Line. Dwight and Vivian, please come up. <laughs> Honoring Dwight Lund and all citizens who supported Warrenville's incorporation. Whereas, the city of Warrenville was settled in 1833 and there were numerous unsuccessful attempts to incorporate between 1927 and 1967. And whereas in the mid-1960s, Naperville annexed 168 acres of land, crossing the tollway, making it clear that if Naperville could push into our community's territory, so could Wheaton and West Chicago. And whereas under the leadership of Dwight Lund, the Citizen Steering Committee for Incorporation began to get organized after filing another petition for incorporation in March 1967 for a May 20th vote. And whereas the Lund family basement was transformed into the operation headquarters and an extensive campaign was launched. And whereas on April 27th, 1967, Dwight Lund and the Citizen Steering Committee or incorporation penned a convincing letter in the digest, which was instrumental in swaying public opinion. And whereas the committee organized 13 coffees in private homes during the weeks before the vote and prayed around town the evening before the election. 
And whereas with a population of 4,000 and numerous failed incorporation attempts, Warrenville finally incorporated with the mayor council form of government in 1967 with a margin of 641 to 518. And whereas May 20th, 1917 is the 50th anniversary of the vote to incorporate Warrenville as a city, therefore I, David O'Brien, mayor of the city of Warrenville, do hereby commend and honor <coughs> Dwight Lund and all the citizens who supported the effort for their contributions and service to the successful incorporation of our city of Warrenville. Dwight, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Are there any of the steering committee people in the audience? Would they please raise their hands? So, we met at 7 a.m. every morning for a couple of weeks, and uh, we had the coffee pot on, and Tony Kressel said he drank that cup of coffee at 7 o'clock in the morning, and he kept him there all day long. <laughs> we were very fortunate in having professional help supported by Brooks McCormick. Brooks wanted very badly to be a member of the city of Warrenville, wanted to keep that address, and he um, hired or gave us the money to hire a professional campaign manager who had been successful in electing George Romney to the governorship of Michigan. The things that he had, had us do were to go back to the polls that had been before and find out where the negative vote had been centered. And then we gerrymandered that out of the community at the 67 election. So consequently, we were able to get the maximum of votes that way. We also made sure that all the college students got a ballot that were out of town, and we had 20 of them come back uh, to support the election. And of course, I was accused of wanting to be mayor of Warrenville, and I sent a personal letter to every resident in Warrenville saying that I would definitely not accept any official position in the city of Warrenville. Uh, didn't say anything about her. <laughs> but it was a privilege to do this, and it was a delightful time, and I'm very proud of what has developed, and the city of Warrenville is probably one of the nicest places to live. Thank you, Mayor. I always had something to add. You know, I, because I was mayor for 20 years, a lot of people, you know, talk about what I got done. But I have to tell you, if it hadn't been for Dwight and the leadership he gave to this, younger people and people who have not lived here very long do not know what an uproar this was in our community. And there had been uh, the Historical Society, and Lynn's here, she's the president of the board, and in their, in their newsletter this week, the election just before this one, there was an area of Ray and Manning centered that had flooded terribly, and they couldn't get help from any government unit. And when the floodwaters went down, they had thousands of frogs, and that neighborhood uh, got the petitions assigned to have an election to have it, uh, our community incorporated because we just didn't have any government body that we could appeal to for any of these needs that we had. The county, or the township, none of them could service us because there were too many of us. But um, uh, when Naperville, when Northern Illinois Gas let it be known that they wanted to come here, we had an, uh, an election, it lost, so Naperville jumped the tollway, and then when Amico wanted to come, we had a referendum to get incorporated so we could service them. That lost, and so Naperville took them. 
And so, you know, it just became really clear to a lot of people, not, not everyone, obviously, but uh, Mr. McCormick really understood that. And, you know, he was one of, he's probably the best friend Warrenville's ever had. And it's St. James Farm Forest Reserve now, but he loved Warrenville. And this guy was born here. He lives about 400 feet from where he was born. And so he loves this community and he's sacrificed a lot for it. And I don't think he's ever been recognized for all of that because he did so many school board, un unpopular school board referendums too. I would add two things quickly. One is there, there was another threat that was um, being formed just west of us, the, the village of Weston. Um, that used to be all farms out there. It's Fermilab now. At one point, that was supposed to be a, one of the biggest developments in the state. Weston was going to be huge, and there was a fear that that was going to take over Warrenville, and we'd become part of Weston. So uh, the other point that I would make is um, recently we had uh, um, someone propose a referendum that would annex us to the city of Naperville, and um, the reaction from our citizens was predictable. Um, I think I can say this in public. The, the best one, the most succinct one that I heard from anybody was no, and hell no. <laughs> We owe Dwight the fact that we love our community. We would not have a Warrenville if Dwight hadn't taken upon himself and Vivian and all the others to fight for this. And it was an enormous effort. So it's good sometimes to recognize that what we take for granted, loving our little town, somebody else had to fight to get that. So Dwight and, and friends and Vivian, thank you so much. Okay, onward and upward into citizens' comments tonight. I um, have quite a stack here. Um, again, I would say that if you didn't realize that you had to sign up to speak, you can still speak. I'll go through the people who have signed up, first of all. Um, the idea is to go to the podium, introduce yourself, give your address, say your piece. Um, the only thing that I would caution you is that um, given that we have this number of people who wish to speak, be brief, say what you have to say, and it's okay to say I agree with the people who spoke before me. I have the same opinion. You don't have to repeat the same thing over. It's best if you've got something different that you take time to uh, give that to us. But we're willing to listen to anybody who wants to speak tonight. We will listen respectfully and hopefully give everyone a chance. So I'm going to start with, I've got a stack here. I'm just going to go one at a time through the stack. I'll say your name and invite you to come to the podium, okay? Mike Votel. I'm Mike Votel, resident of uh, Mignan, or Mignan Drive, and uh, there's a large parcel, seven and a half acres, that's being uh, sold currently, or going on the market, coming up, if nothing else. And my concern, there's just been a lot of talk about rumors, I'll say, if nothing else, of how that property may be developed, and of course, the fact that any builder is going to want to try and get the most bang for his buck, if nothing else, when he develops it. Um, and my concern is that we have a, 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 a nice charm on our street, and uh, I don't want to see it changed. I want, you know, I mean, our lots are 150, whatever. House is set back nice. I'd like to maintain that. I, I don't want some subdivision come in and, and somehow go around setbacks and variances and all the other things because it's some part of a, a subdivision or something else. I'd like it to be individually just like any other person that ever went through the process to build anything in the city of Warrenville. If it's not complying, then you go through a variance. You ask your neighbors for permission to do so and they come out in a forum and be able to talk about it openly such that everyone can understand everybody's point of view. And that's what I'd like to see continue to happen. 
on a case-by-case -case basis, if nothing else, such that our neighbors continue to, to be happy with the development that comes in. I welcome the development. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's great. I, just, I mean, I like an open lot, but it'll be nice, you know, to see it developed in a nice way. Thank you, Mike. Um, the other thing I would ask is, just because you agree with the speaker, if you clap for everyone, we're going to be here till midnight. We understand that there is a sentiment that, we, that you want to express. Let's let the people express that sentiment, listen respectfully, and listen to everyone. And let's try to compress it into a reasonable amount of time. Stacy Coker. Yeah, you can take it out and hold it. It works better okay. if you do, actually. Oh, I'm Stacy Coker. I'm on uh, Burke Avenue in Warrenville. And I do agree with Mike, and I just feel that any new development that comes in should match the current characteristics of the neighborhood and fit in. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Jim Coker? Jim Coker, I live in the same house that she does. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> when we moved to Warrenville, or when I did it, Stacy was already here before, but when we moved to Warrenville, there was a, a greatness about it. The, the way the neighborhoods are developed, we have nice lots. We have, it's a very friendly, nice, great area. We just want to keep it the same. Let's not change it too much. I know things have to change and move on, but let's do it right. And let's, let's do it the way it is now and, and keep it growing the way it is. It's a great town. Thank you. Colleen Dunn. My name is Colleen Dunn. I live on Mignon Drive. And as I understand it, the proposed change um, has been proposed to change lot sizes and, and have an impact on setbacks on the lot at the end of Burke and across from Mignon Drive going over to Town Line. Um, I know that's further down in the future, but I think most of our opinion here is just that we want to keep development consistent with what is already there. And if something needs to be changed or if a developer comes in and wants to make smaller lots and change setbacks, then I think there needs to be a good enough reason for the change to happen to where it benefits more people then it impacts negatively. Because I can tell you when we first started hearing about this, and we're talking Wednesday night, with 48 hours notice, we had 35 people, and I do have the list here if you need to see it, that all managed to gather together and explain that we all feel impacted by this. Um, on the Burke side road, on our side of the road, we're just talking about this community that we love and why it is the community love and that we fight for. Well, like everyone else before me has said, and that will come after me says, it is because of the character of the community, and we don't want that changed. We're not being unreasonable in saying don't develop. We understand that's part of life, and we think that's great. We've all come from places as well. But we're saying keep it consistent with what is there. That is a totally reasonable request. Um, like I said, I have the name of 35 people, and that list is growing. If, if you're going to make a change, to any sort of referendum or you're going to change the, the policy, I think it's only prudent to ask the citizens first if they're okay with that because most of this is not public knowledge at this point. I know that it has been you know, on the docket, but most of the people out in Warrenville that you talk to don't even know that this is an issue right now. And when they find out after it's, it's passed that you know, higher density residential is okay, that's when you're going to start seeing a lot of people come out and say, wait a minute, I don't want this. I didn't want this. Who is this good for? So we're just asking if you are going to change the, the, the style, the feel, if you're going to make changes to what is okay and make things less restrictive, at least ask the constituents first. So. Thank you, Colleen. Um, a couple of you, I can't make out your last names, and I'm not going to try. I'm just going to try with the first name, Harold. And we'll let Harold give us his last name because I can't read it. <laughs> uh, I'm Harold Menger. 
a newer resident on Mignon Drive. We just moved in about a year ago, and we specifically selected that street because of the character of it. Uh, we fell in love with it, and we just don't want it to change at all. Um, so I couldn't agree more with what they've all said, and we just want it to be consistent. We're fine with it being developed, but we've heard that there might be as many as 14 homes put on that lot, and that would really change the aesthetic of the neighborhood. So that's all. Okay, thank you, Harold. Uh, Christina? My name is Christina Mazzaferro. I live on Mignon Drive. Um, in addition to agreeing with my neighbors, I'd also like to bring up that there are possible environmental impacts to these developments that I think need to be researched and understood before any changes are made. Thank you, Christina. Glenn Ansel. Glenn Ansel, I live on Wagner Drive. I agree with everything that they've said. My house backs directly to the property that, that we're talking about here. Uh, we built that house 15 years ago with the specific hope that whatever got developed would mirror the neighborhood so that the houses would face Mignon and face Burke and that there wouldn't be some type of subdivision uh, developed in there. I live there, I watch the water accumulate. There is a wetlands issue back there because the water drains, so you should also look into that. Thank you. Allison and Vince Jolie, did I get that right? You can, <laughs> close. <laughs> you knew who you were, so that's, that's all that counts. Hi, my name is Vince Ioli. And I'm Allison Ioli. I just thought we'd come up together for sake of time. So. Uh, we, we moved into Warrenville. Uh, we live on Wagner Drive. Uh, we moved into Warrenville 14 years ago, uh, a month before our first daughter was born. We moved into this area because of the the character that it that it has. And you know, as everyone said beforehand, we're we're asking. We understand progress in moving forward. We're asking that the uh, the community and the the area stay consistent what it has been in the past. Thank you. I agree. Thank you, Mark Worka. <clears throat> Evening, my name's Mark Burka. I'm on Burke Avenue, 3 South 550 Burke Avenue. I agree with everybody so far. So I'm going to read a little bit. <clears throat> so uh, what's it all about? Footnote P of Table 4A of the ordinance states, any single family residential district where 50% or more of the frontage of block has been developed with buildings, the minimum front or corner side lot, side yard shall be the lesser of 50 feet or the mean average of the existing actual front yards in the block. So at this time, I'm requesting that the council postpone discussions and voting for the requested consent regarding the deletion of this footnote. So a little background. This is an important issue that is actual and current it's not simply a policy matter pertaining to archaic footnotes. Footnote P is important today and provides neighborhood transition and deference to existing residents. Last June, a developer who is also on the zoning board member submitted engineering permit plans to the city for a proposed subdivision of a 2.45 acre lot. The proposal included six parcels of which five fronted Burke Avenue with only 30 foot setback. Last July, the city confirmed that the required front setback, according to P, for the five parcels that would front Burke Avenue is 50 feet. On August 4th of 2016, the developer, who uh, the zoning board member, subdivided and purchased the five parcels fronting Burke Avenue knowing the required setback for the parcels is 50 feet. The existing just in general ordinance, the purpose of the city ordinance is to, and I quote, improve and protect the public health, safety, and welfare of residents of the city. Among many things, the ordinance seeks to, and again, I quote, conserve residents' property values 
and, I quote, prevent new construction that does not comply with restrictions within the ordinance. The ordinance requires that provisions that impose higher requirements shall govern. The ordinance also allows applicants to request a variance via the zoning ordinance process. So other considerations. As a concerned resident, I want to know, and as city council members, you should also want to know why this isn't being considered as a specific variance. From where is the call to make this change? For this specific case, the developer should have to describe the hardships not resulting from the applicant's actions versus simply inconveniences. Explain why this 2.45 acre and or 1.25 acre property cannot yield a reasonable return, not just to increase the return from the property or confer special privileges. Also explain that the variance will not impair property values in the area. An existing personality and character exists on the block. Removing footnote P would have an adverse effect on the neighborhood. The public good means more than specific benefits from zoning ordinance amendments which are conferred upon only a few. Again, I'm requesting at this time that the council postpone discussions and voting for the requested consent regarding the deletion of footpoint P. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Fred Olafs. Fred Olafs, 3 South 750 Mignon Drive. I just want to respectfully request that the council consider removing this uh, item A from the consent agenda for further consideration uh, so they have a chance to hear more from the residents. There's a lot of concern uh, and there's more information that can be gleaned. Uh, to help you make the best decision possible in this on this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Chris Sywall. I'm Chris Seinel, 3 South 760 Mignon Drive. I concur with everyone. I moved here a little over a year ago. My wife has lived here in her entire life. I moved here to bring my kids to keep the integrity. Big lots, great neighborhood, great friends, great neighbors. I don't want to see that change. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. John Thompson. I'm John Thompson. I live at 3 South 630 Mignon Drive. I've been there for 41 years. I've seen a lot of changes on my block. I've seen the neighbor's house get tore down. I've seen another new house got put up. And when I built my house, they, I was told I could have just a minimum backfill uh, enough to raise it up so the water would drain and not to bother any of the neighbors. But the, new house that went up to the south of me. It looked like he was developing an 80-acre farm. And he had the dirt piled all up in the back. And then when they put it all back down, it looked like the, the ground was higher than mine and it was all the way across. And the guy told me he didn't want any water running across his land. And I had to eat the water because he had burned me. And I went to the my aldermans, and I went to the city code enforcer at the time, and he said, oh, they can't do that. And then the next day, he come back with another story. So I concur with everybody else that said something here because I could see what's going on. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Doug Bash. I am Doug Bash, uh, 3 South 635 Migden. Uh, I butt up right, up right up against that property. Uh, just like everybody else, I moved here because the lots were nice. 
come to love the forest. Um, I like seeing wild turkey and deer in my backyard, as even even the coyotes a little bit. Um, but uh, just going to love it. Uh, I don't want it to change. I understand that development's got to happen here as well as on the Berg property. We're certainly in alliance with uh, with that property as well. Uh, maintain the lot size, uh, maintain the setback. Don't change it too much. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, Terry Bash. Hi, I'm Terry Bash. I also live on Mignon with that guy. Uh, um, I'm in 100% agreement with what everyone said here, but I'm actually specifically here this evening in regards to the setback um, ordinance, and I agree with Mark. If you could postpone, um, so and Fred as well, so that you could postpone for uh, for more research to be done, more community to to know about what's going on. I'm afraid of what precedent that's setting to change the character of our neighborhoods, um, the undeveloped or the vacant lots in mature developed areas. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Terry. Andrea Thane. I'm Andrea Thine, and I'm at 3 South 620 Mignon Drive. Uh, I'm here now 16 years. I really call this my home. I, too, joined my neighbors on Mignon and in empathy with Burke Avenue people that we want to keep the integrity of Warrenville and have the larger lots and the setback as it is. And thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Andrea. Ryan McIntyre. Hi there, Ryan McIntyre, 28W722 Town Line Road. Um, certainly agree with everything that's been said already. I also think this has bigger implications. As a change of ordinance, it affects everyone in Warrenville. Um, and I think I've heard a lot of that. So other than that, I, I support everything else that's been set up here. Thank you, Ryan. Jay Carlson. Hello, I'm uh, Jay Carlson, 3 South 741 Meeting Drive. I'm a newcomer here, I've only been here nine years. Um, my concern, besides what everyone else is talking about, I live at the end of Mignon, second from the last house, the dead end, and when we get rain, uh, my kids canoe in our backyard when there's normally grass planted. So if we have higher density houses being built in that empty parcel, that water has no place to go. So that has to be taken into consideration as we think this through. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Emily Seinel. Hi, I'm Emily Seinel. I live on Mignon Drive. I'm actually born and raised in Warrenville. I just recently purchased my parents' house that I was born in. So I know there's a few of us on Mignon that have actually done the same. Um, we bought, we wanted to move back. We bought these houses. Because we love the area, we love the land, we want our kids to have that open space, the trees. Um, you know, I've, I have lived in Aurora you know, for a brief time in subdivision housing, been there, done it, and <laughs> don't really want to go back. And I don't really want to see our unique town lose its characteristic and, and turn into that. Um, you know, we all talked about you know, the, the vote about getting annexed into Naperville, a lot of subdivision housing in, in that type of a setting. We picked Warrenville for a reason. It has characteristic, it has that unique value. So uh, again, agree with everyone else. Just, you know, if you could re please research and, and postpone the vote to really take into consideration all of the residents' views. Again, it, it's, it's really impacting all of Warrenville, not just Burke, not just Wagner, not, <clears throat> excuse me, not just Migden. So just really want everybody to really think this through and make sure that we're making the best decision for Warrenville as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Joshua Cuff. So Joshua Luff, I live on Wagner Drive. Um, just like the last person, uh, we moved here from Wheaton. This kind of thing happens in Wheaton, it happens in Naperville. 
all the things that were said we didn't want when Warrenville was originally established. So I agree with um, the setbacks. I agree with uh, not having the ordinance put through at all instead of just pushing it off. I'd like to see it removed and voted no. It doesn't. It doesn't fit with the culture of, of what we've grown to know and love about Warrenville. There is a wetlands issue. There's a water sewage issue that still should be addressed, even regardless of what does or doesn't go in. Um, a lot of the wastewater backs up. And um, yeah, on top of that, I just uh, we look at we look at the community we have. We like it. We understand that there's going to be change. It doesn't need to be changed like this. I know that the only other thing that I think that hasn't been brought up is I understand that we all want to raise or keep raise tax revenues to keep keep taxes low. That's great. There's a lot of other ways to do it. This doesn't need to be the way to do it to put a bunch of houses in just to keep taxes low. Thank you, Joshua. Larry Muzik. Good evening. Larry Muzik, uh, 719 Migden. Been here 20 years. Mayor, council, and staff, uh, I am against the ordinance modification and feel that Warrenville should be developed consistent with the established precedent and guidelines. The Burke neighborhood is consistently R2, and I, I am under understanding that the proposed change would allow it to be uh, moved to R5, and that's just not right. It doesn't fit with the neighborhood. The tried and true rules of the city have served us well. The closer the houses are, the more flooding issues we will see. I happen to live next door to the Cases Forest. The water that crosses Wagner goes into Cases Forest and through between the houses. The Cases Forest floods, my backyard floods, and ends up in Jay's backyard where my kids and his kids canoe. So it's, it's, we have flooding issues in that part of town. And by stacking five houses on Burke, it's adding to the problem. So that's why one of the reasons I wanted to be a little bit unique and appealing that this ruling of changing the ordinance would be postponed and more thought would be put into it. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Before we move on to uh, other comments on other subject, is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this subject? I welcome you to come up and introduce yourself one at a time, hopefully. Good evening, I'm Nancy Votel. I live at 3S 678 Mignon Drive, and I agree with my neighbors, and it's a wonderful showing, and I hope that the council respectfully uh, listens to all our issues and can you know, come to a resolution that will be fair and equitable for all. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. I'm Bob Smith. I lived at 3S 760 Mignon Drive for 36 years. I just sold my house to my daughter and son-in-law. I don't want them mad at me because it's all changing. <laughs> so you got to bail me out on this one, okay? I'm a, I agree with everything everybody's said so far. Thank you. I think you just nailed it, Bob. <laughs> we can't have that happen. Anyone else? Good evening, Council. Sorry. Uh, Ron Lasowski. I live on uh, 28W 750 Rogers Avenue. I'm right at the uh, Burke Crossing where, where all the grass is. Um, I agree with all, the, all my residents beforehand. I think we should postpone. And I just, it seems to me anytime that uh, communities, large or small, start trying to remove ordinances, remove restrictions for easier passings, easier access or whatever, that usually doesn't benefit the individual or the community. It benefits the person trying to make it easier to pass things, make it easier to, to as we're doing, or as we're, we're trying to prevent, um, get these more houses there that benefits that individual. 
but it doesn't benefit all the rest of us in the community. I would, I'd ask that the council consider the individual's motivation for doing this as well as the effect it's going to have on the rest of the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, before we go on then, just a couple of things. One, um, I wanna compliment all of you tonight on your deportment. You were respectful, you said your piece, you did it in a way that um, made us understand why you were here in a way that we could respect back at you. So thank you so much for that. Um, when you read the papers, um, you don't find this in the world that much. This is the way it's supposed to be done. We try to make good decisions for you. You dis disagree with them, you let us know, and we react to that. Um, this is a, a, a series, one of a series of text amendments that came from the Plan Commission. Generally, they come, uh, if they're unanimously passed by the Plan Commission, they come and they're put on the consent agenda for the council, and they're almost always recognized by the council because the Plan Commission generally does their homework. For this one particular issue, just so you understand, because I, I'm probably accurate in thinking that most of you did not attend those meetings because you probably didn't know the import of those text amendments, there was over two, two hours of discussion on this, over two meetings. So just so you know, the Plan Commission does their homework, they try to make good decisions, and they do spend a lot of time making those decisions, okay? So I just wanted to make that clear. What I would like to see with this tonight is that hopefully it'll be taken off the consent agenda and it would be sent to a committee meeting for the council to look at. The council is the, the policy making body of the, of the um, local government. The plan commission has already talked this thing to death so it doesn't make much sense to send it back to them again. But it does make sense for a presentation to be made to the council because the council has to vote on this. And it makes sense to invite all of you back and anyone else that you can bring along. That would be great because the two things will come out of that. One, you'll be heard again, and two, you'll understand the basis for the decision. Uh, those, both of those things are important for local government. So hopefully when we get to this coming up here, that will be the outcome. You'll have another opportunity to come. Um, it's great to see the room full for a change. Uh, I understand that you have an issue, but I'm glad that you came tonight and you can see how we operate. We're here every Monday night. You're welcome to come back. Um, but we'll try to set up a time when you can come back for this issue, which I understand is a very important issue to you. I personally have faced an issue. I lived on a little gravel road back in the woods with three houses for a long, long time until somebody bought the 10 acres next to that. Guess what? Everything changed. So I understand what that means. Um, our neighborhoods are important to us. Um, because we choose them. We don't just end up there. And some of you obviously are second generation people. That's pretty cool. So we'll move on with the meeting. We'll see how this turns out. Um, that's, this is the first thing on the agenda, on the consent agenda, so we should have some resolution pretty quickly as to how we're gonna go forward with this. We have one more uh, citizen who wishes to comment tonight on a, a presumably a different subject. I don't know, Bob Siebert, what do you got for us? For those of you who don't know, Bob's here every Monday night. Bob Siebert, Albright Court. First, on that particular issue, people don't realize that 30 years ago, there was an independent woman that lived in that house, very independent. And at that time, the city of Warrenville didn't like independent women. They tried to tell her when she said, the road is mine by township decree from the 1870s. And down there they said, no, we'll take you to court. She went to court. As usual, in the lower courts, the judges rule for the municipalities. She then went to the appellate court, pleaded her own case before the appellate court against David's mentor, Barry Moss, and won the case against the city of Warrenville. The judges at that time said she probably knew more about the law and township subdivisions than anybody in the state. So all I can tell you is that be as strong as the woman that owned that property and go forward because 
I don't live there, but I certainly agree with everything that they've said, and we've had to defend our portion of Warrenville also. But now, what I want to talk about is taxes. Everyone's gotten their taxes. I've got seven tax bills. Winfield Township, Naperville Township, random, vacant property, homes on the properties. I took all this information, placed it in matrices to look at, with the city of Warrenville, the percentage increase in taxes from 2015 to 2016. Because two months ago, John Coakley stated there would be possibly a $20 reduction. At that time, I stood up and said, it's mathematically impossible. The actual tax bills illustrate that there is increases in the city lines items from 2.7% to 4.99%, showing that the taxes, even though, as they stated by the city, we have $3 million of new development, that's going to lower the taxes. No. When you reclaim all of it, not one dime. Also, what is of interest here, one of the vacant properties in TIF 3 had TIF revenue of $15.85. So you'd say, oh, that's not much money. That was due to a $190 increase in EAV, which is meaningless because your taxes are determined by the levy. The distribution is the EAV, but you can't raise taxes by increasing 190. Over the remaining 17 years, if there's no increases, that will generate $300 of taxes on a vacant property. Then you apply this to the houses that are in any of many of these TIF 3, proposed TIF 4, they also have increased taxes, even if you're not going to develop it, even if you're not going to knock it down, if you're not going to sell it, raising the taxes. So I think it's important, particularly when you're changing ordinances, that you make it so that it is comparable to the existing, don't change it, because you can double stack houses, and as we had in Cantera, not one dime of tax refunds will come. The only way they can come is if you, the city, abates taxes. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> Just the reminder about taxes that maybe people aren't aware of. Um, the city of Warrenville gets 9.6% of your property taxes. So if your property tax bill is $5,000, the city of Warrenville gets 450 of that. We are a pretty lean machine here. I'm very proud of the fact that we have no debt, that we have a tight staff, and we get the job done with a minimal amount of taxation. So please remember that. Uh, I, I think the last year, 61% um, went to the school district. 9.6% goes to the city of Warrenville. So just a reminder. Okay, anyone else who wants to enrich us with some wisdom tonight? We're willing to listen. You came out, you should be able to say your piece. All right, we'll move on then. We'll start with the official comments, beginning with the mayor. I will try to keep this brief. I have a number of announcements tonight. I um, <clears throat> want to thank you to School District 200. Um, 
who they do a terrific job. I, if anybody has any children at Johnson School, you're probably aware of what a terrific job Johnson School does. They have every year a day they call International Day, where all the classrooms are set up as different countries and kids experience the culture of those countries through food, music, games, dancing, all this good stuff. Um, it's all put on by volunteers. They do an, an enormous job. They have a big lunch, and the lunch, the lunch is all uh, provided by local businesses. I just wanted to list the number of businesses in Warrenville that contributed to International Day at Johnson School this year. Um, stay in Warrenville. Spend your money here. There are a lot of good restaurants, and they're very generous with what they uh, provide to the school. Rock Bottom, California Pizza Kitchen, Corner Bakery, Potbelly, Buffalo Wild Wings, Montre Thai, uh, Sandy Panaria, uh, I'm assuming that's an individual, Sweet Potato Cafe, Subway, Roma D's, East China Inn, Al's Pizza, Rosati's Pizza, Taco Grill, uh, Dairy Queen, Family Foods, Dunkin' Donuts, and Target. Target. All of those uh, businesses contributed to International Day at Johnson School, so I wanted to thank them publicly and urge you to do business with them because they're clearly uh, community-minded. Um, a few other things. One, uh, today is the first day of the Mayor's Fitness Challenge. This is the sixth time that we've done this. Um, you can get information on our website. You can sign up. The whole idea is to get some extra activity into your life in a little friendly competition with me. You sign up every day. Uh, you put in your number of minutes that you've put into extra exercise. Whatever that is, you get to choose. I put mine in. We kind of keep track. And everybody who does at least 1,500 minutes over a period of eight weeks beginning today gets a cool t-shirt designed by a local graphic artist. And the top 10 minute getters get a trophy this year. So. How cool is that? And oh, wait, I almost forgot. You get to come to a council meeting, put on your T-shirt, and get your picture taken, too. So I mean, this thing is just beyond belief. I'm sure it's going to go viral anytime it hasn't yet, but it's only a matter of time. Very easy to do. Sign up. Do it with your kids. Uh, the minimum age is 12. There's no maximum age. We have special T-shirts for the oldest man, the oldest woman, the youngest one that has the most minutes. So it's a lot of fun. Just go to the website. Really easy to sign up. You get a password, and you're in and then record your minutes, and I will be doing that every day also. Part-time summer help. We're a little short-handed. You may notice some long grass around town on some of the easements we're not able to get to. Public Works is uh, seeking qualified individuals for three part-time summer help positions. Um, it's a way to learn about Public Works. You have to be at least 18 years old, have a driver's license, a valid driver's license, and you can go again to our website for an application, or you can come and pick one up at City Hall. Um, we have a uh, Cop on a Rooftop Special Olympics uh, come roll around again this year uh, at the Dunkin' Donuts up on 59 from 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. Warrenville police officers will be up on the roof. Um, uh, the funding uh, includes uh, T-shirts, baseball caps available for $15 each. Um, there are a few other things you can get. You can purchase things. Uh, you can talk to Sergeant Komar at the uh, police station about this, or you could stop at the front desk. But it's a great way to support the Special Olympics right here in town. Um, so again, it's Friday. Friday. Did I get the date? Oh yeah, Friday, May 19th. I'm sorry. Did I say? Oh, all right. 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. May 19th, Friday, up at Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, thanks to the department for doing this again. Um, we'll have our shredding day again on the 20th from 9 to noon at the Public Works facility. If you've got sensitive old documents in a big old box laying around that you'd like to get rid of, it can be done securely. Um, three banker boxes is the maximum that you can bring in, but you can stuff them pretty full. You can watch them get shredded. You never have to worry about them again. So uh, do come down. Uh, we get a lot of, a lot of stuff uh, safely taken care of with that. Saturday, May 20th also, the bike rodeo comes around again. Um, this is a really fun event. If you've got children, you know children, uh, 12 kids are going to walk home with a brand new bike. Let me amend that, are going to ride home on a brand new bike Saturday. Um, we'll have a mechanic there that'll help people that have problems with their bikes. We have the course. We have somebody from Northwestern Medicine who gives helmets to first graders or young kids. If you don't have a helmet, get a helmet for your kid. Uh, no cost for that. Um, I'll be there. It's always a lot of fun. So stop by, bring them, tell, tell your friends. That's Saturday morning from 9 to 12 over by the gazebo, the annual Warrenville Bike Rodeo. Um, 
This we mentioned earlier, <clears throat> Sunday, May 21st, the 50th anniversary celebration up at Leon Schmidt Park from 2 to 4 p.m. All kinds of fun stuff. The Warren Tavern will be open. The museum will be open. Our uh, museum and artist Maggie Capitelli will be there. Uh, there'll be live music, light refreshments, and kid activities. All kinds of stuff going on to celebrate 50 years of our incorporation. Um, also coming up on Monday, May 29th, uh, we do this every year, the Warrenville VFW Post 8081 and then the American Legion Post 589. We'll have our Memorial Day um, activities and ceremonies at 9 a.m. Uh, right at the Veterans Memorial right across the street from here. Uh, come down and join us and honor our veterans on that special day. Again, May 29th, Monday, uh, Monday from at uh, 9 a.m. And let's see. I guess that's it, huh, all right, I didn't do too bad. I edited that for you because you've been here so long. I could have gone a lot longer. That's it for me, clerk. Just quickly, the mayor and I attended a memorial service last Saturday at the St. Narankari Mission, which is a church up on Mac Road in 59, and their global spiritual leader was killed in a car accident a year ago, so they had a memorial service for him. And it was quite fascinating uh, to be there, and it was an honor to be there. And uh, the people in this congregation are, are um, integrating themselves into Warrenville. So if you need any help volunteering uh, on the river sweep cleanup, they are willing to do that. Uh, Warrenville in Bloom is going to ask them to help us plant our annual flowers on May the 27th, if anyone else is willing to do that. Um, We'll meet up at the gazebo, and we plant, we hang the baskets and plant the planters. So um, volunteerism is strong in Warrenville. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Treasurer, Larry? Yes, hi, everybody. Um, I just want to let you guys know that if you're looking for the most current financial information about the city of Warrenville, it is posted on the city's website. And also, in addition to what the mayor said about the bike rodeo, I also want to give a special thanks to uh, Dairy Queen because uh, anybody that attends the uh, safety course will get a Dairy Queen ice cream coupon, and uh, it's always a favorite with the kids. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Alderman. Alderman Bevere. Yeah, I want to thank all the <clears throat> residents of Ward 1 that came out tonight. I support you 100%. Um, you know, we made our our statement for the city uh, for a visitor a lifetime and that's what you people want to live here a lifetime and have it keep it the same so I know last summer we had a during our road program we had one road that wanted sewer and water forest view lane and it didn't get it because it would erect the integrity of that subdivision and there was no argument and uh, you know we hear you and uh, just wanted to thank everybody for coming out and also I want to make one other statement we had a another person get hit up on 59 in uh, Continental or Meadow. I'd like to see, I know the city of Warrenville has some say in the striping. I don't know if it's at that intersection. I know it's at Batavia in 59, but if you look out of here at Batavia and Butterfield, there's big six inch white bars with cross hatches in it. If we could get them put out there and some of them signs put up to yield to pedestrians, I. I think the city of Warrenville could, should jump in and tell the state, can we do this? You know, just, just it'll make it more visible out there. I don't know if it's possible to do, but um, a lot of people going to Dairy Queen up there, and it, it's, it's dangerous, so thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Um, we are in talks or in communication with IDOT to see what we can do at that intersection. I would just add a counterpoint. I'm glad I got the opportunity to do this tonight. I was on... M Meadow coming south, I was stopped at 59 today. I was going to go straight across, and as I was sitting there, a lady came down from the north on 59 and turned right, and as she was turning the corner, she's texting. Okay, so, I mean, we can do so much, but this is, uh, I, I think there have been recent psychological studies that say you cannot multitask. You can only do one thing at a time. If you're texting, you're not driving. If you're driving, you shouldn't be texting. But she was actually, she turned that corner looking at her phone and using her thumbs as she turned and off she went to the west. So 
thanks for giving me the opportunity to vent, Fred. Uh, Alderman Widener. I also uh, wanted to make a comment about the unfortunate incident at uh, Route 59, Meadow, and Continental. We've had numerous ones out there, and the council and the city staff has taken action and submitted in recent weeks a letter to IDOT um, outlining a lot of our concerns with that intersection. And I would only ask that, you know, this most recent incident be added to the letter as an addendum and there be a copy sent to IDOT so they are kept abreast with the most current situation that's occurring out there. And um, hopefully we can expect a response from them in short order and that we will follow up and find out if and when we will get a a response on the um, document and letter that we uh, sent to them. And also just um, as you engage in your summer activities, whether it's biking or walking or running, just uh, be careful at all the intersections. And uh, um, again, you know, if you're driving, don't text. So thank you. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Ashhauer. I'd just like to thank everybody that took the time to come out tonight I know it's an imposition on your your personal life to show up in a meeting and and say something um, I appreciate the fact that everybody's able to get together Friday night and tell us what was going on and how we could help and that you came to back us with what we try to do here so uh, kudos to you guys and thank you all for showing up and taking the time though there will be more meetings I mean the the, uh, the intent tonight is to move this to a uh, Community development meeting or the next uh, committee meeting for the council to make a decision on this, and then it'll be referred back to the planning committee. My guess for certain amendments that that uh, may be common sense modifications that may, I, may it's it's going to depend on how it goes. I can tell you, you have my full support, and thank you for giving it back. Okay. Anyone else? Seeing none, Administrator. Thank you, I have no comments additional to what's uh, in the packet tonight, thank you. All right, thank you, and Attorney? I have nothing tonight, thank you, Mayor. Okay, we'll move on to the approval of the agenda for this evening then, Alderman Widener. Yes, uh, I'd like to remove item A uh, from tonight's consent agenda and with the removal of item A, uh, move to approve the agenda for the May 15, 2017, City Council regular meeting. Second. Second by Alderman Wilson. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We have several sets of minutes that need approval also this evening. Alderman Widener? Motion to approve the minutes of the May 1st, 2017, City Council regular meeting. One, the uh, May 1st, 2017, City Council regular meeting. Two, the May 1st, 2017 City Council closed session and to approve the minutes of the May 8th, 2017 <coughs> Community Development and Planning Committee of the Whole regular meeting. Second. Second again by Alden Wilson. Any discussion of those minutes? Again, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, the minutes are approved. The consent agenda for this evening, item 6B. Accept Community Development Committee recommendation, waive second reading and pass ordinance number 02017-27, approving the plan of dedication for right 50, Route 59 right away to the Illinois Department of Transportation. C, accept Community Development Committee recommendation and pass resolution R2017-18, approving the lease agreement with ComEd for the city entrance sign. D, accept Community Development Committee recommendation, approve the Mac Road Trail alternative number three, and direct staff to hold a public information meeting and to reapply for surface transportation program grant funding. E, accept Community Development Committee recommendation and authorize staff to work with the city attorney's office to prepare the ordinances required to update Title VIII of the city code and adopt updated building-related codes and local amendments as outlined in the Chief Code Official Engretson's uh, memor Memorandum dated May 4th, 2017. F, accept Community Development Committee recommendation and direct staff to apply for Surface Transportation Program and Illinois Transportation Enhancement Program funding for priority number one, Route 59, Segment 4, from Continental to Batavia Road. 
G accept community development uh, committee recommendation and revise the City of Warrenville 2017 meeting schedule to conduct the July Finance and Public Safety Committee meeting on July 10th and the July Community Development Committee meeting on July 24th. H receive and file minutes of the Bicyclist and Pedestrian Advisory Commission regular meeting held on April 12th, 2017. I receive and file draft minutes of the Plan Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals regular meeting held on May 4th, 2017. J receive and file report of invoices paid up to May 10th, 2017 in the amount of $59,234.34. K authorize expenditures for invoices due on or before June 5th, 2017 in the amount of $122,518.90. And L receive and file a report of debit card expenditures for the month of April 2017 in the amount of $7,493.66. Alderman Wider. Motion to approve the agenda as presented by Mayor David Brummel. Second. Motion and a second. Mayor, roll call, please. Alderman Ashour. Aye. Alderman Hoffman. <clears throat> Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Goodman. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Thank you, Emily. The uh, consent agenda is approved as read, as amended. We will return to item 6A. Alderman Weider, did you wish to bring that forward? Yes, thank you. Uh, motion to accept the plan commission recommendation, waive second reading, and pass ordinance 02017-26, amending ordinance number 1018, zoning ordinance of the city of Warrenville. Second. Okay, discussion, Alderman Widener? Yeah, I guess I would um, defer to Alderman Ashour, who had some specific um, suggestions as to um, the process he'd like to see followed uh, in his neighborhood. Okay, Alderman Ashour? The uh, <clears throat> 6A, I'd like to remove only item nine and postpone to the next community development meeting of the whole, or the next community development meeting that would be suitable. I, they, they, I'm sure everybody here wants resolution uh, based on my, my discussion with you. <laughs> Sooner is better. Okay. Um, so we can let them know, they can come back and they can hear all the discussion before it goes any further. Okay, if uh, I remember my discussion with uh, Community Development Director Manser, we could get this on next Monday night. So we could do this next Monday so you wouldn't have to wait. So could we have the motion then relate? Um, what we'll have to have then is, um, how do we exactly want to do this, attorney, if we want to vote on all but the one? We want to pull the one, how, do we, how many motions do we need to do this? We have a motion right now. Right, that's what I'm asking about. She's a lawyer too, that's why she's <laughs> trying to help me out here. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh, I'll defer to. No, go ahead. <laughs> uh, You're so, the official yeah, one. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we, we have the uh, motion on the floor to accept the plan commission recommendation. It looks as though the item that's in question is section five of the proposed ordinance, which reads as follows. Footnote P to table 4A of ordinance number 1018, zoning ordinance of the city of Warrenville shall be deleted in its entirety. So if that's the case, we would need to amend the motion to accept the plan commission recommendation with the exception of section five of the proposed ordinance. So okay. that we could, if the city That's council That's the first step, and then we'll have to do another motion after that. Right. Yeah. Okay, so the first motion, um, would the uh, motioner and the seconder agree to that change, that amendment to the motion, pulling that one item out um, enumerated by the lawyer? Yes, and I understand that we're making a, we're amending the motion to accept the plan commission recommendation with um, exception to number five. It looks like section, section five. Section five of the proposed right. ordinance. We're removing section five. Okay, so everything else remains. That's not controversial. Uh, those text amendments don't have a problem. So we have motion, second. motion, or a second. Agreed to the, both of those. Agreed. Okay. Um, do we need a roll call for that, or can we do a voice vote? I would suggest we do a roll call. Okay, roll call please. Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Hoffman. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Ashour. Aye. Alderman Goodman. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Okay, now we have to go back and deal with that and I would uh, ask for a motion to uh, refer discussion of that item to the next committee meeting next Monday night, the date being 
Who has the date? Who's quicker than I am? 22nd. The 22nd. Okay. I'd like to recommend to the council that we um, bring up the establishment of front yard on vacant lots next weekend or next week at the uh, committee of the whole meeting on Monday night. Okay. No one asked her. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on that? Alderman Barry? Well, the um, chairperson hasn't been asked if it's okay to move this to finance. Ah. Well, this is an oversight. Chairperson, can we hear from you? Can I ask Director Dahlstrand how many items we have on that agenda already? And I apologize for that oversight, Chairman. We currently have 11 items on there. There is one of them that is li likely to be pulled and a second that may also be pulled. So there's a chance we'd be down to nine items. Okay. All right, you're agreeable? Okay, so we're set then. All we need is a vote. Let's do a roll call again, please. Alderman Hoffman. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Goodman. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Ashour. Aye. Okay, motion carries. So next Monday night, 7 o'clock, the same room. You're all welcome to come back. Bring your friends. You're welcome to speak again um, or just listen. If nothing else, you'll learn the process of how this decision was made. I can't guarantee that the final decision will be one that you will agree with, but at least you will understand why it was made and the reasoning behind it, and you will have the opportunity to be heard again. So you're welcome to come back next Monday night. And we are essentially done except for one item. So if you would just be patient for a little bit longer, you can be here for the vote to adjourn, which is the high point of the evening. I know, I'm, get, I'm getting to that. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to the regular agenda. We have one item. Uh, would someone like to make the motion to discuss that, please? Alderman Widener. Motion to accept the Community Development Committee recommendation and pass resolution R2017-19, authorizing Mayor Brummel to execute an agreement with the winning electrical power supplier under the electrical aggregation program subject to review by the city attorney and city administrator. Second. Second by Alderman Wilson. A quick introduction and maybe an executive summary of what this is about by Assistant City Administrator Christina White. Christina. Thank you. This evening on the dais was a memo and resolution to update the city council on the finalized rates that we received from Dynegy Energy for the city's electrical aggregation program. Um, that motion will need to be changed to reflect that change with Dynegy Energy. Um, they have come in as the lowest bidder for a 14-month term with 100% renewable energy at 7.27 uh, cents per kilowatt hour. I would like to point out to the council that that is approximately 0 0.085 cents per kilowatt hour, more than the ComEd rate that is um, has been announced for this upcoming year, and that is due to the 100% renewable energy that's included in that in that cost. So we're paying slightly more, but we can be proud to say that we have required 100% renewable energy for our town. That is correct. And uh, David Hoover from NYMEC is here to answer any additional questions that the city council may have. Now there's a dedicated man to his business. He's here for this whole meeting. <laughs> Thank you, David. Um, any Any questions from the council on this? Uh, I think we have to change the motion. If you notice, there's a memo at your table on the front that has a slightly different motion tonight. <clears throat> so um, if the motioner and the seconder are agreeable, could you read that uh, adjusted or amended motion, please? I'd like to amend the motion to uh, read uh, to accept the community development committee recommendation and pass resolution. R2017-19 authorizing Mayor Brummel to execute an agreement for 100% renewable energy supplied by Dinergy Energy under the Electrical Aggregation Program subject to re the review by the City Attorney and City Administrator. Second. Oh, motion and second. Okay, we got it right that time, Attorney? Yes. Okay, good. All right, any additional discussion? Alderman Goodman. Yeah, I just want to let you know that um, all the feedback I've gotten about this municipal aggregation program so far has been very positive. Uh, the people who know about the program, which admittedly isn't everybody, but the people who know about the program are very proud of the fact that Warrenville gets its energy 
on a 100% renewable energy standard. And although that, that doesn't mean that we have a, a set of windmills here in town that we're plugging directly into, it does mean that in order to get our business, this energy supplier has to buy credits from mostly wind, um, but also some other renewable energy sources to ensure that they have enough demand in the bank, so to speak, to make investments in their future energy supply strategy. And that allows renewable energy companies to be profitable for the long term, that allows them to provide renewable energy at reasonable prices here in Illinois. So I'm proud to be a part of that, and the feedback that I've gotten from our residents has been universally positive about that. So I know there's a teeny fraction of a cent higher charge involved, and I really support that anyway. So, and I think our residents do too. Thank you. And uh, Assistant City Administrator would like to come in. Thank you, Alderman. Christina. I just would like to add one last thing that um, this contract will also include a um, zero early termination fee. So any individual resident that does not want to participate in the program has the opportunity to opt out. Um, and there is no termination fee or charge to do that. Um, uh, letters will be sent out. If the council decides to approve this action tonight, there will be letters sent out to the residents impacted and they will have instructions with an opportunity to opt out. Okay, so this, this contract on our part is not a commitment to every individual citizen should they wish to get their energy somewhere else. Thank you. That's correct. Okay, good, all right. And Alderman Bevere. Question if uh, residents have a, already in a contract with another company, do they still have to opt out? David, please. Yes, thank you. No. <laughs> okay, say that on camera, please. <laughs> uh, residents who are already in their own program that have made their own choice are excluded from this program. Uh, they will get a letter of information just informing of them, but we will not impact or do make any change to that, and they need to take no action to retain that. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, roll call, please. Alderman Ashauer. Aye. Alderman Goodman. Aye. Alderman Widener. Aye. Alderman Bevere. Aye. Alderman Wilson. Aye. Alderman Berry. Aye. Alderman Hoffman. Aye. Thank you, Emily. Well, we have nothing under unfinished business, nothing under new business. We do not need a closed session. We have one last motion, and I probably can't do this legally, but I'm going to do it anyway. You've been so patient, so when we take this vote and everyone votes aye for adjourn, you get to vote too, okay? So I want to hear it. <laughs> Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Alderman Widener. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you for your patience. <laughs>